But now we're on Daf Tezayin Omid Beis, and we're studying a machlokas between Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai as it was recorded in the Mishnah and Erevin by Rab Shimon Gamliel. Beis Shammai Omrim Mila Malo, who Beis Hillel Omrim Mila Mata. In other words, according to Beis Hillel, we'll start with Beis Hillel. He's being very machmir. He's requiring that this machitz of ten tefachim dip below the rim of the bar and goes all the way down to the surface level of the water. That's how subterranean it is. So you have the water on the bottom. You have a certain area of ground and airspace up to the rim. And you've got to really put this machitza down, down, down to almost separate the water and split it in half, whereas Beit Shammai are more making. They allow milamala, it could be above, meaning it could be high up. As long as it's 10 tfachim, that's fine. Now, if you take a look at Tosis on the second line, he writes that if you look in Mesech the Erev, and you'll see that it's Muchlefes Hashitos, our Girsa is an incorrect Girsa, because it cannot be that Basil is Machmir. Basil is never Machmir. I mean, if you learn Mitzvah Evios, you'll see the exceptions to the rule. But as a general rule, Beis Hill is always Mekel and Beis is Machmir. So it can't be that Beis Hill Omer Milama. So let's switch around the Girsa and Beis Hill Omer Milamala and Beis Shammai Omer Milama. Now Rashi points out that the Machlokas here has to do with what's called the Machitza Tluya. And how does Rashi know this? From the Bar Plukta of Rab Shem ben Gamliel, and that is Rab Yehuda. Omar Rab Yehuda, again, an extension of the Mishnah in Erevin. Lo tehei mechitza gedola min akosel shebeinayim. In other words, if the kosel itself, which is on top of the bar, is a mechitza, then that's reliable. There's no need to create a second machitz, a subterranean below the rim and the ground level of the, of the bar. So we see clearly that we see clearly a mazel tov to Yechiel Prince. He just sent me a, a notification about the birth of a grandchild. Anyway, so we see clearly that the machlokas here revolves around a mechitzah tluya. Now again, when this mechitzah tluya is towards the top of the bar or towards the bottom of the bar, that's machlokas beisil beit shamai. But both beisil and beit shamai agree that you could have a mechitzah that doesn't reach the water, and the purpose of mechitzah is to split the water in half, half for Ruvain on one side, half for Shimon on the other side. Which Rabbi Yehuda says you don't even need that machitza because we're going to rely on the machitza on top. And the Mepharshim, Rashi quotes, uh, point out that this is a cool of Rabbi Yehuda for the sake of Mayan. You know, in those days, they didn't have running water like we do. They just turn a faucet. Water was an expensive commodity and it was a necessary commodity, obviously, otherwise you get dehydrated. So there was a cooler here that you can allow for a machitza on top. And according to Beisil Beit Shammai, the way Rav Shem Gabriel reports it, we're not going to be so make you and allow a mechitza on top of the ground to be matir, the mayim, and split it to, into two. We're going to need some sort of heker that he is creating a mechitza that's splitting the water. Whether, that, whether it has to be all the way down the mat or not, that I don't know. But certainly you need a mechitza on the bottom. But everybody seems to agree that you need a mechitza, except for Rabbi Yehuda. Omar Rab Barachon of Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yehuda Beshitas, Rabbi Yossi, Omra, Di Omra, Mechitza Tzluya Materetz. So that according to Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda, you've got a bar midway equidistant between the two chatzeros, I mean, the opening of the batim, into this common chotzer, that would be a more precise way of saying it. And it is not splitting the water. 
it doesn't reach all the way to the bottom. Elamai, you can apply the principle of God aches mechitos and create an imaginary mechitza. So Rabbi Yehuda is very satisfied with that in our mission. He doesn't require a second mechitza. One mechitza suffices, even though it's a mechitza tluya. Whereas Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, in the name of both Basil Beit Shammai, they require a more serious mechitza that goes down towards the water. Says Rabbi Yochanan, we can identify Rabbi Yehuda in the mission in Erevin with our Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi holds with regard to a sukkah, that if you have a sukkah that's suspended in midair, it comes all the way down, and it doesn't go within three tvachim of the ground, nevertheless, Rabbi Yossi says it's a kosher adelphin. Why? We're going to apply god aches machitos, even though it's a machita tluya, it's suspended in midair. So therefore, says Rabbi Yochanan, we can identify Rabbi Yehuda, the Mishnah in Erevin, who allows for the efficacy, recognizing the validity of a mechitza tluya with Rabbi Yossi and the Mishnah in Sukkah. And the Gemara rejects it. Lo he. Lo Rabbi Yehuda savala ki Rabbi Yossi, lo Rabbi Yossi savala ki Rabbi Yehuda. They each have room, we don't know for sure, but to possibly reject the other sheet. The Gemara analyzes. Lo, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yudha, Savala, Rabbi Yossi, Ad, Kan, Lo, Kam, Rabbi Yudha, Sam, Elo, Dei, Rav, Chatzay, Rav, Sdra, Bada, Midaraisa, they're allowed to carry from the water in the bar into their homes because the Chatzar itself is Rishul Sayachid, it's surrounded by Mechitos. It's only the Rabbanan who passled it, and they required an air of Chatzeros, is therefore, says Rabbi Yudha, I could be Mechil, even with the mechitz on top of the bar, which splits the water based on God aches mechitos, even though it's tluya, it's suspended in air. Avol haches sukadoraisa, but the requirement of the finals. And now we're assuming we're both saying that it's one of the two finals. It's not the third dof. The third dof could be just one pefa. But with regard to dofen of sukkah, here we're dealing with the doraisa. The Torah says besukas teishu shivas yomim. And you need full-fledged mechitzos. And a mechitza tluya is not a mechitza, even a quick review. The review is only mekil in a drabanon for the sake of drink, allowing them to drink the water to create an air of chatzeros, which is all drabanon because we're dealing with Rishos HaYochid Doraisa. And by the way, this Gemara here would seem to tip the scale. You remember I raised the question at the beginning whether or not the psul here, according to the Rabbana, the Tanakama, is Doraisa, it seems like it's a psul Doraisa. Because I'm a hocha suka Doraisa. Lo Rabbi Yossi, Savalaka Rabbi Yehuda, Ad Kaloka, Omar Rabbi Yossi, Hocha, Elabis Sukha, the Mitzvah say. In the worst case scenario, if you're going to be Machshir as Sukha, and it's Dofen, in the case of a Mechitza Tuya, you're allowing for a mitzvah, mitzvah say, and the worst case, you forfeit a mitzvah say, it's not tragic, or at least relative to Shabbos. Aval Shabbos, this is skill alone. Shabbos is a more chamer, it's a capital punishment, and therefore we have to be more careful. Now, what is going on here in this Gemara? We're not talking about a chiv skila. We know that we have a Rishus Hayachid here. The question of this machis is only as far as Erev Chatzeros, which is the Rabbanon. But since the entire enterprise of Shabbos is more chomer than just a regular rank and file mitzvah, I say like sukkah, no offense to sukkah, but we're dealing with a doraisa that couldn't possibly lead to skila. And this, by the way, has to do with the methodology in Shas, which is called Kol the Tikkun Rabbanon came to Raisa Tikkun. And when the Rabbanon created a Rishus Rabin in the case of a Chatzer, Right, of, of a chutzah that's being shared by two batim, and they called it a Rishus Rabin, even though it's Doraisa, it's surrounded by Mechitos, that gives it the status of a Rishus Rabin Doraisa. Because called the Tikkun, it's an extension of a Doraisa. The Gemara now tells us a story in Tzipori. Maisa Shenasa Bitzipori. Now this, Rashi points out, 
that Vim Tomer Maisa Shanasi with Sipar Al P Minasa. Rashi says Al P Minasa. Hello, Rabbi Yossi, Rosh Hashiva. Shall Yeshiva Sipari Avi Kedamrino Bisan Hedrim. So anything that went on in the city of Tzipori at the time of Rabbi Yossi had to have his, his temple of approval. He had to agree with that ruling. And we're going to see that in the, in the case in Tzipori, we're going to deal with this issue about a mechitza tluya. So the Gemara, before quoting the Maisa in Sipori, which we'll see in just a minute, the Gemara says, LLP Rabbi Yossi. It couldn't have been that Rabbi Yossi was around at that time. LLP Rabbi Yishmael, Rabbi Yossi. It was the next generation, Rabbi Yishmael, the son of Rabbi Yossi. And he was the one who gave this ruling as far as Shabbos is concerned. And this is going to contradict the previous Gemara, if it was Rabbi Yossi himself who gave the ruling, because if you remember, Rabbi Yossi only allowed for a Mechitza Tluya in Sukkah, which is a mitzvah say, but he would not allow a mechitz, recognizing the validity of a mechitzah tluya in Shabbos. And the case in Tzipori was a Shabbos case. My Maisa, the Chiyasa Rav Dimi, Amar Rav Dimi came from Babel Teretz Yisrael, and he was one of the two great Amoroim, Rav Dimi and Rav Oven, that came and brought the tradition from Eretz Yisrael to Babel. Of Pamach, as Shachachu, below a view, Sefer Torah Me'er Shabbos, it happened in Tzipori, that the Beis HaKnesses opened up into a chatzer that was shared by many different bat, and Rashi also has another possibility of Mavui, and Shachachu, they didn't make an air of chatzeros, now they're in trouble, because the Sefer Torah was located in a private house, Rashi says, Biba Maskel Ella, that Hoyadarkom Latzniya Sefer Torah the Goyim used to steal Sifrei Torah, so they put it in a private house. They would not leave it in the shul. And also, they didn't have an error. On Shabbos, what are they going to do? How are they going to get access and transport the Sefer Torah from one house into the, into the shul for laning? By the way, if my father were alive, he would make the following comment: Halafai, the people would come into the safe into the shul for laning. I'm going back to Brooklyn, New York, about 50 years ago. I mean, all the youngsters went out for late. They left the shul. This whole sugya is because we want to hear the laning of the Sefer Torah. And Lamachar on Shabbos, when they realize they're in a bind, Pirsu Sedinim Al Gabi Amudim. There were certain uh, uh, amudim, which were, uh, I don't know if you call them pillars or posts that were, that were located in the middle of this chatzer, and they spread sheets straight across. Now, the sheets were spread away in a way that that one bias that was housing the Sefer Torah would be contiguous to the shul to the exclusion of all the other batim. So that's called siluk in Hilchus Erev Chatzeros. All the other batim were musulakim. They were removed from access to that one bias because we have now all these sheets that separated them. Now the assumption here is that the dinim did not reach the ground, which makes it into a machitza tluya. And yet they relied on the on the validity of a Mechitza Tluya, even as far as Shabbos is concerned. How can Rabbi Yossi, the Rosh Shiva in Sipori, allow that to go on? When we just finished saying that Rabbi Yossi was only Mekil and validated a Mechitza Tluya in Sukkah, which is a Mitzvah say, but not in Shabbos, when you require an Erev Chatzeros, which is a Chiv Skila. We have to assume this was Rabbi Yishmael, the son of Rabbi Yossi in the next generation. So the Gemara just goes on to say, How could they have set up these, you know, these dinim, these dinim on Shabbos? It's impossible. I mean, for two reasons. First of all, they'd be carrying into a chatzah without an Arab. And secondly, you'd be making what's called an all aroi on Shabbos. And you're not allowed to make mitchila on all aroi. Even a temporary all is also on Shabbos. So how did they do this? 
They found that there was Sedinim. They viewed Sefer Torah Bakar, but the Chiddush is that even though the Sedinim were not set up for the purpose of a Mechitza, but for the sake of the mitzvah of Kriya Satora and getting all the young people to come into the Shul to hear Sefer Torah, they relied on a Mechitza that was set up not for the purpose of an Erev. Normally, to set up an Erev, you need Mechitzas that were set up for the express purpose of an Erev. Excuse me for one split second. Okay, so we have five more minutes. Is that okay? Five more minutes. Because, you know, there's checkout time and all that stuff. So we're talking about a machzeles, which we said was a mat. And if you stretch it across from one side of, of the sukkah, if you're drawing a straight line down the sukkah to the other side in one of the dofen, then it would be four tfachim plus in height. The width is whatever it is, Rashi says, from one side to the other, whatever the dolphin is. But as far as the height is concerned, which you could call it rokav, because again, you're stretching it across the dolphin, it's got four tfachim in a mashu. So the Gemara says, hechi aviv. I mean, how could you consider it a dolphin? You're going to have to say it's Tali Leba Emsa. You stretch it out in the middle of the dofen. Pachos Mishlo Shalamata. And the distance between the airspace, the airspace between the ground and the bottom of this Machzelis is less than three tfok. The Chal Pachos Mishlo Kill Love Dami. Now, if you look at Rashi, Dibra Masko Machzelis, which is line three of the wide lines here. At the end of the Rashi, he says, So you have a sukkah that's 10 fachim, exactly 10 fachim high, the minimum height of a sukkah. You've got a machzeles that is four plus tfachim. If you add another three tfachim minus a matru, which is lovud, then you end up with seven tfachim. And seven tfachim now is sufficient to create a dofim. Gemara says, Pshita, what did Rav Chizda add that we didn't know about? The time I would have said, Chad loved Amrinon, Trey loved Lo Amrinon. Keep in mind, the Machatzeles is four plus Tfachim, and the Sukkah is ten Tfachim high. So you've got three Tfachim minus a Mashu of airspace between the top of this Machatzeles and the Schach. You have another three Tfachim and a Mashu minus a Mashu of airspace on the bottom. So you've got two levels. And you're going to create a machitza based on two lovers. Kamash Balon, Rav Chizda teaches us that you can rely on love at times two, and that's fine. Mesve, I'm going to prove to you, no, that we can only rely on one lovehood and not two. Machtela, Shivo, Mashu, Materes, Besuka, Mishun, Dofen. If you have Machtelas, it's got to be seven Tfachim in height, which means when you stretch it along, it goes seven Tfachim. And the reason for that is that now you only have to apply God Achis or God Asik once because of Lavud, because once you have a Shivu Mashu, all you need to make it into a Machitz of Ben Tvachim is 2.9 Tvachim to add to the 7.1 Tefach. And then you've got 10 Tvachim all told, but you're only allowed to use Lavud once. And the Gemara answer is no. We can defend. Rav Chizda against this b'risa by saying, Mi tanya hi Mi tanya, you, this, you, you're assuming that that sukkah was a sukkah ktana and it only had a height of 10 tfach. No, it's a very high sukkah. And if it's a very high sukkah, then you're going to need a machitz of 10 tfachim, which you can only generate if you're using one lavud. 
And what is this price uh, coming to reveal that we didn't know? And we're relying on the opinion of Rabbi Yossi here in this price. We codify the Allah like Rabbi Yossi because we're applying a machitza tluya because this machzeles is way above the ground level. But it doesn't matter because even though it's a machitza tluya, we're going to apply godasic machitzas and we're getting machshe, the dofen of a sukkah, because it's only a mitzvah saseh, and there's no skila dorai. So we're of Ami, Pasar Bo. Pasar Bo, machshu, matir b'sukkah b'shem dofen. You have a board, a mach, or now we're talking about a board, it's no longer machtelis, but a pas. And it's four tfachim plus, and it's going to be used as a valid, and now, umukim le bepachos mishlon shet tfachim samach l'dofen. So between this pass, which is four tfachim and a mashu, in its width, and the dofen to its left, which means the airspace in between is less than three tfachim, and kol pachos mishlo shesam of the dofen can love a dummy, so we see it as sasum. So now we have seven tfachim of dofen, which is enough for the minimum shear of a sukkah, my kamashmal, and after all, we know the din of lavud, ha kamashmalon, shear meshach sukkah ketana shiva. He's telling you that the shear of a sukkah tana is seven tfachim. And this means that we pass in like Beit Shammai, a very rare exception to the rule that we always pass in like Beit Hillel. And we're going to be machmir like Beit Shammai. We need enough for rocho veruba v'shulchano, which means seven tfachim. That leads us to the Mishnah on the top of Daf Yud Zayin of Anal. So Be'ezer Hashem Yisbarach, we were able to finish the daf for today. So I thank you very much. Thanks up to you with you. Shabbat Shalom. Parshas Vashchan. It's a beautiful parsha. And thank you yeah. so much. Shabbos Nachum. Good Shabbos. Shabbos Nachum. Well. Yeah. That's even more important. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I think it's one and the same, by the way, but uh, that's for a different sheet. Okay. Be well. Thank you. Well.